So we're continuing work on this science fiction type uh, bus station, monorail station, sort of urban landscape. Uh, it's in two point perspective and just because it's okay to cheat when you're starting off, I've got my points directly on the page and that's going to be fun because it makes for lots and lots of distortion near the edges. And uh, at this point I've got the major shapes in place and that means I can start putting in details that are going to strengthen perspective throughout this. So for instance to make sure things look like that cliff is falling straight down I'm adding sort of buildings underneath. I'm starting to add pillars to this and I'm not just adding new major shapes I'm also adding little details to give perspective hints everywhere like little billboards and little signs. Uh, I'm always keeping in mind my sense of scale. So again, I use a human being for a scale for everything. And in this piece, based on one human being that I put in right away, we know throughout that uh, from a person's feet to the horizon, if they're on this plane down here, that's going to be uh, correct. So halfway to the horizon is my scale. Now that I've got more of these shapes in, I can start cleaning up. You can see I added a value pass overall, just because I tend to like working on medium gray. And then later on, I use white to sort of key in the sky. And the further back stuff is, the less it's going to really show a lot of that two-point perspective, unless it's really, really high up, which is really the fun of these sort of sci-fi pieces. You can. Uh, you can get really vertical elements. I think I should have done those uh, those posts along the wall using a grid to make sure that they're evenly spaced, but we're still kind of in the rough draft stage, so it's not a big deal. You can see a lot of this drawing is very, very messy, because I'm a lot more concerned with getting the elements in the right spot. Felt a uh, need to get a little more concept art or reference footage. So I googled SeaTac because there's a walkway that goes from SeaTac to the parking lot and that sort of urban element is something that I'm kind of putting in here just cranked up to 11 and there's all sorts of details that you're never going to know unless you're looking at it or you make sure you get reference. So I would never think that there's a zigzag along the side of it and uh, I'm considering that human scale when I draw this walkway because I need to make sure that uh, the window, first off it would go a little bit past somebody's feet and then pretty high up so that somebody on that walkway could look out. And around here where it's kind of messy, this is the perfect place to add a little detail where the perspective turns. So just putting in a little kiosk or credit card machine is going to help the viewer figure out that this uh, plane comes outward. Never turn off this sense of perspective while you're drawing. I'm constantly figuring out is something oriented 90 degrees to me, or 45 degrees to me, and since this is two-point perspective, that's everything. So I'm trying to make sure that uh, I can constantly emphasize that. It's very easy in reality to just have an accidental illusion that prevents you from realizing how perspective turns. So putting in little hints like billboards, doorways, people, walkways. That's the thing that's going to give this a lot of strength. Now these windows I did actually evenly space. You can see I started with one long rectangle and I put a cross through it to figure out the midpoint. I divided that and then I divided a new midpoint. And then on each of those I'm just adding a little bit of an X to add some visual interest. And don't be locked in with squares. So this is an example of just an element to further add to perspective where I chisel off that front corner. And suddenly it's sort of an octagon shape embedded in that wall. And that's going to feel a little more organic. I want there to be a sense of culture about this. I want it to feel like somebody walking around here might be buying a falafel or something. Or a subway sandwich 
or newspaper. A lot of this is still very, very messy. And the nice thing about digital is you can just go clean this up later. If you're not working digitally, which should be the majority of you, uh, what I would recommend is for the majority of the drawing, I would be working in color erase pencil or pencil, like a light pencil, like an H pencil. And this is that's your equivalent of a messy drawing. Uh, you can go pretty light and loose all over. And because it's a light color pencil or a light pencil, you can always go back and add more details later. You don't need to be locked in right away. And that lightness of pencil is something that should give you some freedom. You should feel like you can draw on every single piece of the paper and uh, choking up and being afraid of it is something that oftentimes prevents uh, you know, a drawing from getting rendered all the way up because you don't know and you don't trust what you've got to render. See, all over, you know, just constant two-point perspective. Never turn it off. Even the minute details. Yeah, there's aspects of this that are freehand drawn, but I'm really trying to take as long as possible before I go into that. And in terms of using a loose medium to begin with, a lot of times I prefer to work really light and loose and then uh, ink on top of it once I'm sure that I know which things I like and which things I don't. See, there was just a little too much wide open space that was preventing uh, this giant ground plane from emphasizing perspective. And again, the closer to the viewer we are, the more that perspective matters. So here I'm using the uh, perspective trick of cutting diagonals, but in reverse to make sure that all of these are evenly spaced. So because I drew one rectangle and uh, it was in two point perspective, you can see the one that's closest to the principal vanishing point is the closest to an accurate diamond. And by cutting the diagonal to the principal vanishing point from those diagonal vanishing points, all of those are going to be evenly spaced. So as they get further away from us, they're going to appear closer and closer together. And now I can just do some cleanup. And this is going to by cutting between those two posts, it's going to make them look like they're floating a little less. Now, you, I wanted to maybe have something kind of like the uh, automatic, or just the walking escalators that the Jetson have and airports have sometimes. And you can see there's sort of a bad tangent right there where the handrail is right along that column. And that's the sort of thing that my artistic instincts are constantly looking out for. Uh, when I see that, I want to figure a way that I can work around it. And I don't need to draw lines to make sure that these are even because by drawing lines up and then drawing another two point perspective line through it, I can figure out how to space these two columns so that they're right next to each other. And then, because I have lines that represent that, I can just put them in in relation to the accurately divided squares that I already have. So I don't have to constantly do a new grid. Now at this point, this drawing is getting more and more interesting, and at this point I can start having a little more fun with it. Once you get enough of this grid in place, you don't have to worry about it. I am doing some diagonal cuts to find midpoints, because again, things should distort in perspective, and uh, I just need a midpoint, and that's usually enough that I can figure out which side of this is bigger and which side is smaller, and then I can just eyeball these letters. So you can actually continuously cut those diagonals 
to make sure that you had even kerning for every single letter going on here. And now you can start having a little more fun. So I'm going to draw a little billboard ad. Some Coca-Cola girl drinking cola. Choose Doom is the slogan, I guess. I read that on the cover of a sketchbook recently. I don't know. Just like it. And an X-Wing. Because when you're enjoying a refreshing beverage, you need some X-Wings and mountains. And this is a little perspective drawing in itself. Now let's draw a weird alien. And, you know, if you consider that perspective is just eventually organizing a hierarchy of a bunch of tiny little rectangles, each one of those rectangles is in itself a, a miniature canvas, and that's really kind of fun that uh, a lot of hyper-detailed work by Mobius or a lot of comic book artists is really enjoyable for that. Uh, because, yeah, the overall large shapes are in perspective, and then they just go in and start freehanding aliens and spaceships and you know, weird little markets. You can see that I round those corners so that it doesn't, as this walkway, I mean, I'm trying to tell myself little stories as I think about this. So if this walkway is leading to a sort of vehicle terminal where you pick, get picked up, we need to have a place where the escalator ends and you can get off, right? some sort of advanced kiosk. I mean, there's a lot of other things that I could Google, like airports and, I don't know, TSA, police stations, uh, what's it called? The sort of magnetic things where you get scanned when you get on a plane. And that's all good, but it can be a problem in itself because it's very easy to over render or rather over research. So I've, I've definitely found there's nights where I spend an hour just looking up images and I never actually get to the drawing that they were supposed to inform. So in the same way that you can have figure drawing where you have a 20 minute time limit, I actually try and set time limits for research because at some point you have to get in and draw. So we've been jumping around a lot, right? We've gone from the walkway to the billboard to some of the far off buildings to the sort of building garage uh, to the columns. And that's really important. Uh, <clears throat> you kind of need to work on all of this at once uh, so you don't get too choked up. I'm adding another person here. And I'm double checking my sense of scale. Notice that from their feet to their head, and then from their head to the horizon, that's an equal amount of distance. Because a human being is my scale for everything. There's a lot of old paintings by Thomas Moran and uh, Frederick Church, and it's always fun trying to find like this tiny little human being that they put in that was clearly their sense of scale for these majestic, gigantic paintings of the wilderness. Now I make a mistake here, which is I'm starting to work on this little bus, subway, air, air thingy, but if you look at it, uh, if you're judging it based on the scale, and you really have to constantly do that, man, it's the measure of all things, uh, you would actually notice that it's too small for uh, a bus, I think. Like, it's probably one seat wide. And I think, I'm, I just keep working on this, but eventually at some point I try and put a little driver in there, and when I try and scale him I realize that it's way too small. But you can see that I'm rounding corners and just always going back to that secondary vanishing point, or diagonal vanishing point. At this point I'm actually using a grid to uh, further improve. Uh, I want to have like a train car going behind this. And this is another trick you can use to get perspective without having to do uh, drawing those diagonals to the secondary vanishing point. If I can 
cut a square in half with diagonals, or a rectangle in half with diagonals. I have that point that's the direct middle. And if I use that direct middle point plus the diagonal vanishing point, I can get the direct middle all the way across these. Now if I use the second column, I can draw another diagonal going through the 50% mark. And that's going to constantly repeat over and over, which means that I can have a 2x2 two two area representing this train in perspective. And I can do that over and over, and now I know where to put my train. The problem is it's too small. It's a little baby train. And you might not want to put a bunch of diagonals through things, so do it anyways, just use a lighter pencil. And the thing about light pencil is that uh, a 4H pencil right next to a 4B pencil is going to look very, very, very light based on that 4B. And that 4B pencil next to India ink is going to look completely invisible. And if you just continue this metaphor, a 4H pencil is completely invisible against a uh, India ink dot. So if you're considering these value ranges, you don't have to worry about it. At this point I use that uh, scale to just put in a bunch of windows and they're all going to be nicely spaced. So at this point I have this information is not dogma. It's there to make my life easier. Uh, by putting in those divisions, now I can just freehand eyeball where those windows go. There's little window sills that I put in, and you'll notice that I just put it on the side that if this was a window we're looking into, we're not going to be able to see the rim except on the sides facing us. So just putting in those secondary lines is a great way to add even more perspective. I do it on windows a lot. I think of it as L's and 7's, just because you can fill a whole building up with little perspective 7's. And now, see I'm putting these people in, but something is really wrong with them. And if I consider where the driver would be sitting or standing to the horizon, and then I have him sit down from that. So those two points represent a standing man halfway to the horizon. So if he sits down, you can see that this is a kind of a cramped train. But I did so much hard work dividing it that I don't want to go back and fix it. So instead, I'm just going to say that there's like an undercarriage. <laughs> Even bigger. The details on the train are not perfect, but because they're subordinate to perspective, they turn out okay. And a lot of where I'm placing these is solely based on trying to figure out how to have a nice tangent with the thing next to it. be very very loose with a lot of perspective things and very tight with others and I think combining the two is always kind of important. Uh, I'm a big believer in some of the sort of industrial design philosophies of drawing and art which is that you should use the most economically fast method possible that gives good results. And so you don't necessarily have to always draw with the same stuff. Just try and make sure that you get to the right place. So this is kind of my finished piece. And there you have it. A uh, sci-fi landscape.